Back in the late 1920s, a sinkhole fell open and gave way to something amazing, miles of cave tunnels in Cordon, Indiana. It's one of a half a dozen caves in the country where discoveries are still being made. And as Madison Stacy reports, there's more to explore. Below the rolling hills and farmland in southern Indiana is a whole other world. There's not a whole lot of frontiers left in the, on the earth. You know, there's the ocean that's unexplored, maybe outer space, but caves are one of the few places where a person can go that nobody has ever been. And that's, that makes it kind of unique. The Binkley Cave System in Corridan is a network of caves that extends for 42 miles. It's Indiana's largest cave system, and much of it is unexplored. They think of Indiana as soybeans and cornfields, but this part of Indiana down here that wasn't glaciated is just like the Ozarks, and as we say, it has some of the biggest caves in the world in it. Gary Robertson first crawled into a cave as an 11-year-old Boy Scout and took to exploring underground as soon as he could drive. He's a big reason why people can now venture safely into a small section of Binkley at Indiana Caverns. Robertson and his group venture through total darkness for hours at a time, sometimes doing a military crawl through tight passageways. They keep discovering more areas of the cave, and it keeps getting longer and longer. It used to be about 22 miles, but now it's 42. Robertson suspects there could easily be about 100 miles in the cave system. It already ranks among the largest in the country, and it might be the longest cave system that's privately owned. A portion of it, though, is open to the public. Making it so wasn't easy. It was really hard. I mean, that's the, the bottom line. It took us uh, 54 weeks to develop the cave. There was about six people doing all the work underground and just you'll see when you go in there tons and tons of steel boats that went in on zip lines and a lot of blasting with and stuff uh, uh, developing a cave is not something you go out and hire a construction company to do it unless you're the government otherwise you kind of got to do it on a shoestring boat rides let visitors venture through the winding underground passageways where prehistoric bears used to sleep it's another bear bed up top there and blind cave critters have Couple lived for ago, thousands of years. Paleontologists are still shuffling through the vast amounts of prehistoric skull and bone that are left in the cave, and they've discovered places where a herd of flat-headed peccaries, a prehistoric boar, got trapped and fought to get out, or a juvenile bison died. That room of Indiana Caverns contains valuable information for these scientists and was discovered by adventurers who were willing to dig just a little bit deeper. We were the first people there. It just so happens, I can't take credit for that, but it just so happens we were there and that, that was a really neat thing to be a part of and knowing that there's a treasure trove of information for other people to come along and study. They need a special permit to get behind the ropes at Indiana Caverns and conduct their studies, but tourists can visit all year round. And whether it's July or December, it's always a moderate 57 degrees down here. It'll be up to the next generation to continue the work exploring the caves, Robertson doesn't see an end to it in his lifetime. Who knows, some 11 year olds may crawl through the saber tooth cave and decide, hey, I want to be a cave explorer and, and he can have a career like, like I've had uh, in the future. You know, you never know. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Madison Stacy. The caves are open year round for tours and because they stay the same temperature year round, all you need to take is a light jacket.